Note, we are sampling at the apiary level. Samples from all colonies are being placed in the same live shipping box and large alcohol collection bottle. Also, the debris from the eight frames from the eight different colonies is being knocked into the same collection pan. Now, take the nylon filter and dampen it to prevent it from blowing in the wind. Then fasten it with binder clips to the strainer. Place about two cups of water into the collection pan and gently swirl the contents before pouring the water and debris through the nylon filter. Pour another two cups of water into the collection pan to remove any remaining debris. If necessary, use your finger to gently dislodge anything stuck to the bottom of the pan. Pour the contents through the filter paper. Finally, use the wash bottle to remove any remaining debris and pass this through the nylon filter. Now, gently remove the nylon filter from the strainer, folding it so that the filtered debris remains secure in the center of the filter. This debris will be examined for mites, specifically tropolalaps. Gently place the nylon filter into the small bottle containing alcohol and seal the bottle. Be sure the filtered debris is submerged in the alcohol. Double check to be sure that the lids of the small and large collection bottles are tight so they do not leak during shipping. Gently brush away any live bees that may cling to the box. Check all seams of the box to be sure they are flush and that no bees are present. The Postal Service will reject any shipment that has live bees exposed. Remove the funnel from the live bee shipping container and lift the flap so that it is flush with the top. Use clear binding tape, a postal service requirement, to secure the lid of the live bee shipping box. Follow the tape guidelines on the box and run the tape around the box twice in both directions. Place the mailing label on the top of the live bee shipping box and affix the provided postage. To protect the bees, be sure to keep the live shipping box in the shade and out of direct sunlight. Take the live bee shipping box containing the collected samples to the nearest post office during business hours on the same day of collection. The post office must be open to receive this type of package. To ensure the USDA is prepared to receive a live shipment of bees, email USDA within 24 hours of mailing. Once the live bee samples arrive at the USDA, they will be placed in a freezer set to minus 80 degrees. At a later date, these bees will be tested for parasites and pathogens using molecular techniques. The last step in this process is submitting the alcohol samples. When you have completed sampling all your assigned apiaries, you can send the alcohol samples and data sheets in the provided mailing box. If possible, Photocopy your data sheets so that you have a copy for your records. Place all data sheets in a Ziploc bag and place these into the large flat rate shipping box. Double check that all the lids of the bottles are secure and place these in Ziploc bags. Place the bottles into the flat rate shipping box. If the box is not completely full, use newspaper to fill the gaps. Then seal the flat rate shipping box and affix the provided address label and postage. The filtered debris will be examined microscopically for exotic mites. Finally, the alcohol sample will be used to quantify bee parasites and pathogens. Beekeepers participating in this survey should expect a summary report on the average apiary level of nosema, honeybee tracheomite, and varroa loads in the sample apiary within six months of sample collection. A separate report which presents the results from a molecular analysis of the sampled bees should be sent to beekeepers 8 to 12 months after sampling. This later analysis will determine which bee viruses and nosema species are present in the sampled apiary and will screen for exotic honeybee species or subspecies. 
That concludes this video, and thank you again for your participation.